In January 1992, astronauts from the United States, Canada, and Europe joined forces on board the first International Microgravity Laboratory. This flight of the Space Shuttle Discovery offers a preview of the worldwide cooperation and research possible on board Space Station Freedom. Experiments are conducted in a wide range of disciplines. For life sciences, astronauts study a type of motion sickness known as space adaptation syndrome. Tests explore the relationship between body position sensors located in the eye and inner ear. Even in the weightlessness of space, where there is no clear sense of up and down, astronauts feel they are lying on their side in the pitch or sideways position. For materials science, crystals growing in zero gravity offer new advances in high technology manufacturing. This crystal is being grown as a detector for X-rays and gamma rays. Understanding how this crystal converts light energy to electric voltages requires the availability of large, high-quality crystals for research. Astronauts also test an eyewash device being designed for use in space station freedom. Valuable feedback is gained on the design of the European Space Agency's BioRack. The unit contains a cooler, a warming incubator, and a glove box that contains objects and debris that otherwise might float away. Experiments are conducted on bacteria, fruit flies, bone, and tissue cells, examining the effects of cosmic radiation. These studies of the microgravity environment are critical to understanding its effect on living organisms. The first international microgravity laboratory demonstrates how space-based research is a powerful tool for scientific investigation. With the Johnson Space Center, prime contractor McDonnell Douglas is assembling frame members of the Propulsion Module Development Unit. Each contact point on the center frame must be carefully prepared to ensure good electrical bonding. This unit is part of Freedom's propulsion system, which provides thrust for attitude control in space, booster energy to maintain proper orbit, and maneuverability needed for collision avoidance. The assembly proves the efficiency of modern CAD-CAM techniques used to create these parts. Computer-aided design and computer-aided manufacturing are an important ingredient in maintaining a robust manufacturing sector in the United States. Living and laboratory modules for space station freedom, similar to those used in the first International Microgravity Laboratory, are the responsibility of the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. Boeing Company, prime contractor, is assembling these units. Large rings seal the connection points of the living and laboratory modules. Debris is removed from the structure in preparation for mounting the berthing ring. Once in proper position, the ring is tack welded to the development unit in preparation for testing. In the hot draped former area, technicians are fabricating structural members of the modules. This technique shapes multiple ply layers simultaneously, reducing the labor needed to fabricate complex designs. The graphite epoxy materials must be heated to an internal temperature of 140 degrees Fahrenheit. After cooling, the surface release film is removed. The finished product will be incorporated in one of the modules being developed for Space Station Freedom. By implementing universal standards for the payload racks, significant savings have been achieved. Scientists from around the world are planning a diversity of experiments, all utilizing one cost-effective modular structure. This research center in Cleveland, Ohio, is responsible for all systems that generate, store, and distribute electrical power. Prime contractor, the Rocketdyne division of Rockwell International, has begun the transition from design to fabrication. Construction is now underway on components of the electric power system. These electromagnetic interference units help shield equipment from disturbances in space. 
Since the power system is one of the earliest components needed to operate Space Station Freedom, it is among the first being produced. This new circuit tester, useful in a wide variety of other commercial applications, is being used to automatically test the integrity of every circuit board. One component approaching final assembly is the battery box, which houses the rechargeable nickel-hydrogen batteries. In preparation for the critical design review slated in December 1992, the box is readied for neutral buoyancy testing in the Johnson Space Center's Weightless Environment Training Facility. Here, in large underwater tanks, astronauts practice tasks in an environment that simulates weightlessness. The battery box is tested for maneuverability and accessibility with both power and hand tools. Is it directional like a socket? The results are analyzed and designs revised. The best position is determined for handholds on equipment. Also, to prevent tools from floating away in space, okay. ideal locations for tie-downs are identified. A remote manipulator system provided by the Canadian Space Agency is tested for manual deployment. The participation of Canada, Europe and Japan has enhanced space station freedom. The Japanese experiment module consists of a pressurized shirt sleeve compartment for living and working, a remote manipulator arm for outside experiments, an exposed facility for astronomical and Earth observation, and two logistics modules to store and warehouse materials. Tests are now underway to evaluate the ease with which the crew can operate inside the module. Here, a technician occupies a sophisticated seat that simulates body posture in orbit. An eye mark recorder is mounted on his head. The moving mark on the screen traces eye movements across the workstation's panel as the technician is instructed to perform a variety of tasks. Data from these tests will enable designers to improve the workstation's physical layout. Tests are also being run on the remote manipulator system, operated inside the spacecraft to perform tasks outside. This model allows software engineers to check computer programs which operate and control the arm in space. Video cameras mounted on the arm help in the evaluation process. These computer-generated images simulate operation of the manipulator arm. The pictures include the control panel, two views from TV cameras that will be mounted outside the spacecraft, and the view out the window. The knowledge and skills gained in developing this advanced technology have benefits here on Earth. When risky tasks must be performed in hazardous or toxic environments, sophisticated robots like these are able to spare human workers from danger. Experiments that are difficult or impossible to conduct on Earth can be carried out in the vacuum of space. The Space Station Processing Facility at the Kennedy Space Center is where elements of freedom will arrive for final assembly and testing. Clean room environments, cranes, and video communication systems allow NASA staff to perform a wide variety of pre-launch activities. Specially designed work stands will support the hardware while trials and simulations are run on the fluid, electrical, control, and monitoring systems. The building is designed to contain hardware operations facilities, offline laboratories, control rooms to support test activities, and areas for logistics and general support. After components for freedom are assembled and tested, they are transported to the launch pad for installation and delivery on board the space shuttle. On April 16, 1991, groundbreaking ceremonies were held. The facility is going to be located on this site right over here to your left. Construction of the 466,000 square foot facility has involved more than 90 contractors from 22 states. Structural steel was erected in October of 1991. And the building was topped off in April of 1992. Early activities include construction of footers, piers, tunnels, and underground plumbing. The space station processing facility aims for completion in 1994. International cooperation, scientific breakthroughs, new benefits. Space Station Freedom, building tomorrow, today.